Tom Shringa, Para Tom Shringa, Para Tom Shringa, Para Tom Shringa, Para Shringa, Para Shringa, Narasimhamadin Sharanam Prabhati Tavakara Kamala Bare Nakamadhuta Shingam Dalita Heranyakasipu Tano Pringam Kesavatrita Narahare Rupa Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Welcome back. Had a good trip? Oh, thank you very much. Most of Kamaraj. Today's Sokha will be 9.5 and 
Yeah, I was going to speak about Gundicha Marjanam and about Bhakti Nath Thakur. Well, can also more. Could I have fun that? No problem. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think, speak, think so. Yeah. Speak on that is okay. No problem. Thank you. Hare Krishna. the uh, auspicious disappearance day of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and also Gadara Pandit. So we will speak about them and also about tomorrow which is the auspicious day of Gundicha Marjana. Alright, so first of all we have a song written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. I think many of you know it. Sri Nam Kirtan. Yeah. Songs of the Vaishnava Bhaktivinoda Thakur written one song Srinam Kirtan. Let me see, find the page for you. Very small. I'm not <laughs> Yasomati Nandana Brajabarana Kara Okula Ranjana Kahana Yaso mati nandana brajavara nakara kopula ranjana khana Gopi parana janna madhana manohara Kopi Parana Dhanna Madhana Manuhara Kalayana Manavi Kahana Kalayana Manavi Kahana Amala Harina Mania Vilasa Amala Harina Mania Vilasa Vipina Puranga Dana Vina Nagarapara Vipina Puranga Dana Vina Nagarapara Nan 
Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So it is customary in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition that we will celebrate both the appearance and the disappearance of the great Acharyas in the line of the Siblic succession. Do we need translation? Okay. If you want Tamil translation, maybe at the back you can. We have also Chinese translation going on. Yadu Nandan. You want to hear? Alright, so we're celebrating today the disappearance of one of the great Acharyas in our line of the Siblic succession, namely Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, before taking the name Bhakti Vinod, uh, he was known as Kedarnath Dutt. So, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared in this world in a place called Birnagar, which is not very far away from Calcutta and it's on the way to Mayapur. Their ancestral home was there. You can go and visit the place. So, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was born in a wealthy family and he got a very good education. And from an early age he took an interest in different philosophies and he read books about the different major religions of the world. He read about Islam and he read about Christianity and he read about Buddhism and he read also, of course, about Hindu Dharma. He was born in Bengal, in, in that region of India, Bengal, and at that time they were under the British rule. So the British had a big influence over people. And naturally people were thinking more about Western tradition and Western lifestyle. And so Bhaktivinoda Thakur took some interest in Christianity for some time, reading about the, reading the Bible and about the life of the Christian saints. But he was never fully satisfied 
until he came across the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it was the Srimad Bhagavatam which actually awakened him and answered many doubts which he had. It was the Srimad Bhagavatam which he considered to be the, 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 the real fruit of all Vedic, of all the knowledge of the world. So he was very happy to read that Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, he had heard about other books, for example, he'd heard about the life of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he wanted to read the books about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are three major books on the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There is the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there is the Chaitanya Bhagavat, and there is also the Chaitanya Mangal. Chaitanya Mangal is by Lochan Das Thakur. Chaitanya Bhagavat was written by Vrindavan Das Thakur. And it was the Chaitanya Bhagavat which came out first, and that was followed later by uh, the, the Chaitanya Charit Amrita which was written by Krishna Das Kaviraj. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur desired to read these books but he could not find them. He had great difficulty to locate anything like the, to get a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He inquired in many places without success. It was very difficult for him to find. Somehow, finally, he was able to locate a copy of the Chaitanya Charitamrita in some devotee's library. And he was able to have a copy of it made and he also went on to write some commentary on it. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a very educated person and he studied languages, he was fluent in the local languages and he was also very well read in the English language. So he got a big position in the government service. And at one point he was posted to Jagannath Puri. And in Jagannath Puri he was given the responsibility to oversee the administration of the temple there in Puri. The main center of activities in Jagannath Puri is at the temple of Lord Jagannath. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, as a magistrate there, he was responsible to oversee all the affairs of the temple and to keep a track of everything which was going on. So he would go every day to the temple and he would give discourses there. And there was even one Babaji coming. This one Babaji, he was uh, propagating another mantra. He had made up a mantra. He made up a mantra with different names in it. And it, it wasn't the Maha Mantra. Maha Mantra is a Vedic mantra. Maha Mantra is in the Vedas. You can see it's quoted sometimes. Iti sodasha kam nam nam kali kaumasha nasanam mata paratharopaya sarva vedeshu drishyate. The Vedas say that these uh, 16 words, Sodashakam Nam Nam, 60, the 16 names which make up the Maha Mantra, that these Iti Sodashakam Nam Nam Kali Kaumasha Nashanam, they can clean all the dirt from the heart. These 16 names are so powerful and they're there in the form of the Maha Mantra. So the Maha Mantra is an authorized mantra, is in the scriptures, 
it's not something somebody just made up. It's actually there in the Vedas. The Vedas are eternal knowledge, right? It's Shruti. The Shruti, the Vedic knowledge, where did it come from? Tene Brahma Ridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya. In the very beginning of creation, the Vedic knowledge was imparted into the heart of Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma is famous for giving the Vedic knowledge. And where did he get the Vedic knowledge from? It was imparted into his heart by the Supreme Lord. So within the Vedic mantras, there is the Hare Krishna mantra. Just like I quoted this, like Vrti Sodasha Kamnam. This, this is the statement of the Kali Santara Upanishad. The Upanishads are from the Vedas, they are Shruti. Just like we have our Ishopanishad, right? Have you read the Ishopanishad? Yes, yeah? but Prabhupada wrote the commentaries on the Ishopanishad. So Ishopanishad is also from Vedas. So this verse which says these 16 words and then it goes on to say what are the 16 words. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That these 16 words can cleanse all the dirt from the heart. So very powerful. So this Babaji who was coming, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was lecturing in the temple, he was giving classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and from the scriptures. But there was this one Babaji coming, his name was something like Radha Charan Babaji. And he had made up another mantra and he'd incorporated different names, Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. Like, but it was not Vedic, it was not authorized. And he was propagating the mantra and he was getting followers. You know, if you want to be cheated, you'll find a cheater. And so we find there are many people who, who get cheated. So this Radha Charan Babaji, he was coming there to Puri and he was listening to Bhaktivinoda Thakur lecture. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur was telling him, he's saying that your mantra is not authorized, it is not Vedic mantra. You are promoting irreligion by spreading your mantra. You're not doing any good for anybody. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching strongly to this Babaji, but the Babaji did not take it very seriously because he had followers. So he thought, if I have to surrender to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, if I have to say I'm wrong, I will lose all my followers. So he didn't want to lose all of his followers. You know, for the sake of the, the support of the people and maybe the money which they give him and so on, he didn't want to speak the truth. So the Babaji, although he was coming and hearing Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he didn't change and he continued to promote his chanting. And even today there are people who still chant this bogus mantra. He himself, who was propagating it, he ended up going crazy. He ended up becoming insane. But still people, ordinary people, they, they thought, no, this is good, we follow, we chant this mantra. So what, what could be done? Anyway, Bhaktivinoda Thakur tried and he preached to him and he tried to convince him, but the Babaji would not give up. He continued to propagate his irreligion. And even at that time, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's son 
Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was there. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was very aggressive in his preaching because he was the brahmachari. So he was very powerful and he would get angry <laughs> and he would really criticize and shout and you know, get quite passionate about it. And so much so that Bhaktivinoda Thakur at one point, he told his son, he said, look, you know, better you go to Mayapur and sit down in Mayapur and chant Hare Krishna. And that way you can be more peaceful. But if you stay here, you're making so much turmoil by your, by your, by your powerful cheat, chanting and by your powerful speaking, people are becoming disturbed and you're creating enemies rather than friends. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur told his son, better you go to Mayapur and stay in Mayapur and chant the holy name. And that was when Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he went to live in Mayapur and he took a vow to chant the holy name. I, I can't remember how many like, how many crores names he was going to chant. But he chanted for, for many years. He had to chant for several years the holy name. And every day, continually chanting, every day chanting 64 rounds or more in the day, every day for, for years. So he, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati did like that under the order of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Vinod Thakur was very powerful but at the same time he could be also very kind. And generally the people all respected Bhakti Vinod Thakur because he was, he was holding a high position in the service of the government as a magistrate and also because of the way in which he dealt. He was known to be very honest and very fair in his dealings with people. He was not interested in just getting money from people. He was not like that. And he was very dedicated to writing and he wrote many wonderful poems which we are singing today. We were just singing the Nam Kirtan, that's one of his songs. But there are hundreds of his songs. And if you go into the villages in Bangladesh, today even, if you find the Hindu villages, you'll see the people there, they know all of these songs and they sing them regularly. Bhaktivinod Thakur wrote one book of songs called Sharanagati, all songs all about surrender to Krishna. And we, we also sing them in our ISKCON society. We're also singing songs like Shuddha Bhakata, right? Shuddha Bhakata is about items which are favorable for devotional service. And the song describes many different things which are favorable for devotional service. It talks about Madhava Titi Bhakti Janani Yatani Palanakoni. That he said uh, the holy days, holy days like Ekadasi and Janmastami, they are Bhakti Janani. They become the mother of devotion for those devotees who take shelter of them. So, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur also said, Yetina Grehe Bhajana Deke Greheti Goloka Bhaya. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is describing, when I worship the deity in my home, my home becomes Goloka. Yedina grehe bhajana deke 
Grihiti Golokabaya. Now, Prahlad Maharaj, he was telling his father, home is like Andakupam, like the blind well. He was telling us, get out from the home. Go, don't stay at home, it's like the blind well. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, as a Grihasta, he's saying his home is Goloka, when he's worshipping the deity. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a Grihasta. Actually, first wife, had, first wife died, so he remarried. And he had altogether twelve children. And he trained all of them to be devotees of Lord Krishna. He brought them all up in Krishna consciousness. If you go to Mayapur today, if you go to the Yoga Peak, the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you will see at the rear of the Yoga Peak, there is a deity of Lord Narsingha Dev, and there's also deities of Gaur and Gadarhar. So the Gaur Gadarhar deities, they were worshipped by the wife of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Her name was Bhagavati, the second wife. She was a very chaste lady and she worshipped the deities of Gaur and Gadarhar. And she also worshipped the deity of Lord Narsingha Dev. And those deities, after she departed from the world, the deities were brought there to the yoga peak and they're kept there in the yoga peak and worshipped there by the devotees staying in the yoga peak. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a grihasta, but he's described as being the seventh Goswami. Now we know six Goswamis. Bande, Rupa, Sanatana, Raguja Go, Sri Jiva, Gopala Go, right? The six Goswamis, we say Sat Goswami. And do we have the picture on the altar? Yeah, you can see on the altar there on the bottom, on the extreme right there on the bottom level is the picture of the Goswamis, the six Goswamis. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he is described as the seventh Goswami. But he was not a sannyasi and he was a grihasta. But in his grihasta life, he was very renounced and dedicated to preaching Krishna consciousness. We know from the Srimad Bhagavatam there are two kinds of grihastas. There is a People in the spiritual ashram, they're grihastas, but there are also grihamedis. So grihamedis are also griha, they're also married people, but their interest is material life. Their interest is just simply sense gratification. And they live in the family life just for the pleasure of their senses and their family members and have no other higher purpose than that. That is the Grihamedi. It is not a spiritual ashram. It is a materialistic situation, the material consciousness. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was not that kind of Grihasta. He was a very spiritually enlightened person. And although he had a big family and he had his wife and children, but he was not interested in his own sense gratification. But he was always thinking to propagate the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we offer our respects to Bhaktivinoda Thakur just like we offer our respects to Prabhupada, so we, we pray to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, we say, Namo Bhaktivinodaya Satchitananda Namine Gora Shakti Swarupaya 
Rupa Nuga Varayate. So in this way, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is described that Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchit Ananda Namini. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. <coughs> Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur is described as Satchit Ananda Bhaktivinod. Satchit Ananda, meaning eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. The, the, the nature of the spiritual body is Satchit Ananda. And it was Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur who educated people into the spiritual nature of the Lord. And because he propagated this fact that the Lord is Satchitananda and the living entity's spiritual form is Satchitananda, he became known as Satchitananda Bhaktivinod. And then he's described, Gora Shakti, meaning he's empowered with the energy of Lord Chaitanya. Gora Shakti. Swarupaya, Rupanuga variety. Rupanuga means he follows in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami was the direct disciple of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Rupa Goswami had written important books on the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur followed the teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we are known as Prabhupada Anugas. We follow in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada. So in the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was known as Rupa Anuga, one who follows in the footsteps of Rupa Goswami. And at the same time, He's empowered by the energy of Lord Chaitanya. One has to be empowered to propagate the chanting of the holy names. It is stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Kali Yuga Dharm Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vini Nohi Tara Pravartan. The Dharma for the Kali Yuga is the chanting of the Holy Name. And one must be empowered by the energy of Krishna in order to properly spread the chanting of the Holy Name. The example is given just like if you are involved in any legal proceedings. So you may ask a lawyer to represent you. So the lawyer can go to court on your behalf and he can make statements before the court on your behalf. So the lawyer represents you. So in the same way, one can be empowered by Lord Krishna to represent Lord Krishna to propagate the holy name. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was that kind of person. He was empowered by Lord Chaitanya to propagate the Sankirtan movement. And he did it by going everywhere preaching Krishna consciousness. For some time he was there in Jagannath Puri and then later on he returned over to Bengal because he wanted to Establish the proper place of the birth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who actually found out the actual birth site of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had built his home at Swarup Ganj. So if you go to Swarup Ganj, you can see there are two places there. On one side, there is a home where Bhaktivinoda Thakur was living. And on the other side also, there's a place called Surabi Kunj, just round the corner from
from the home of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, where his samadhi is, then you can see a place called Sorabi Kunj. And it was there at the Sorabi Kunj that Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote books like the Sri Krishna Samhita, important books which he, which he wrote and published. And Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur also wrote the Navadvip Mahatmya, the glorification of the holy dham of Navadvip. And he described all the places of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes in that book. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur was empowered by Lord Chaitanya and he was able to do wonderful things. So much so that it was in the year 1896 that he was writing books and publishing them and sending them to the Western countries, sending them to universities in America and Canada as well as Europe. So 1896 was the year in which our own founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada was born. So it gives you some idea, you know, uh, means 150 years ago, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was preaching Lord Chaitanya's mission to the, the whole world. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Lord Chaitanya did not come just only to deliver a few Indian people. He came for the benefit of the whole world. He wanted to dis distribute Krishna consciousness to all the people of the world. And then Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who is credited with being the pioneer of spreading Krishna consciousness in the Western world. Srila Prabhupada doesn't take that credit. He gives that credit to Bhaktivinoda Thakur because even in the year of his birth, 150 years ago, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was sending books to these universities. And the devotees went to these universities and they were able to find the books. They actually found the books there. In the, in the archives in, that, in these universities. And so the devotees were very encouraged to see how Bhaktivinoda Thakur took so much trouble, so much effort to try to distribute Krishna consciousness all over the world. In Bhaktivinoda Thakur's time, of course, it was very difficult to go to other countries, not so easy. You could do it, but somehow Bhaktivinoda Thakur didn't go out so much himself. He stayed in India and his main preaching was in the villages. And he would go from village to village. And we, to today we have, we have a Namhata preaching. And we have also the program for Bhakti Briksha. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had described all of these things. The Namhata, the marketplace for the holy name. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur had described the market and the different people in the market. And he described how the spiritual teacher, the guru, is the sweeper in the market. Although we may think the sweeper's position is low position. It's a very important position because the guru is responsible to sweep out all the irreligion, all the bogus philosophies, all the nonsense teachings. His job is to keep the purity of the marketplace, just like a sweeper goes round the market and he will sweep up all the rubbish and garbage. You keep the marketplace very neat and clean. 
So the spiritual teacher has to make sure that everyone follows carefully the teachings of the scriptures. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he did that in his own time. He was a very good example and he did not tolerate any deviation from the principles of the scriptures. There were some famous incidents which took place during the life of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. One was, there was this one man named Bishikishena. Bishiki Sena, and he was claiming that he was an incarnation of God. And he was debauchee, he was a rascal. He was claiming that he was God. He had yoga powers, however. And by his yoga powers, innocent people were influenced to thinking he is actually an incarnation of God. He could do things like he had fire coming out from his head. Sparks would come off from his hair. Like some people were very afraid of him. And he would get angry and curse people. And sometimes when he would curse people, they would get sick and even die. So people were very afraid of him. And he was so powerful, he used to get married women, young women who were ma already married and he would corrupt them and bring them to his ashram and then he would have, he would say we're going to do rasa lila and in this way he would corrupt them and do terrible things, illicit, sinful activities with the young women and nobody could stop him, everyone was afraid of him. So. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was recruited by the government that, you know, you are a religious man, you should do something about this man. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur went there and he had him arrested. But when he had him arrested, the yogi threatened Bhaktivinoda Thakur that you're going to die and all your family are going to die. I'm God and you're obstructing my pastimes, so you're all going to die. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, let them die, I don't care, but you're not going to go on with your nonsense activities. I'm going to have you punished. And in this way the man was taken to jail and he was held in custody. But the, this yogi, he was fasting, he would not eat and he would not drink for 28 days and he was so powerful he somehow he was able to live for 28 days without food or water and Bhaktivinoda Thakur his family members were all getting sick even his own daughter was very ill they thought she's going to die and Bhaktivinoda Thakur himself was having fever and when it came time to the trial he was carried into the court. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur would not give up. He said, no, this man has to be punished. He is, an, he is a rascal and a cheater. He is, he is claiming himself to be God. And that he, how could he ever be God? There is all the incarnations of the Lord are recorded in the scriptures. So this man is a rascal and a cheater and he's behaving in immoral ways. He must be punished. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur would not compromise. He insisted on going through with the, the trial. But this man, this yogi had many followers and they were all protesting. They were outside the courthouse and they were chanting, they were wanting him to be released, they wanted him to be freed because he was very powerful. So he had many followers who were believing in him and they were, they were condemning the government and they were criticizing Bhaktivinoda Thakur for doing all this. 
But Bhakti Vinod Thakur would not listen to them. He knew what was the actual facts. So finally, the judge gave the decision and he sentenced that yogi to go to prison and to do hard labor in the jail. So when he was being taken to the prison, what happened was one man came with big scissors and he cut his hair. And when he cut the yogi's hair, then the yogi fell down and he lost all of his strength. He had no strength anymore. The yogis, these big yogi, tantric yogis, they get their power by having long hair. Right? The devotees, they get their power by shaving their hair, cutting all the hair off. But this tantric yogi had long hair. And when he cut off all his hair, the yogi lost all his strength and he fell down. He fell down very helpless, he could not do anything. So when the, the common people saw that, oh, he's lost all of his power, so then they, they didn't follow him anymore. They saw this, he's not a real incarnation of God. If he was an incarnation of God, how could it be like this? So they gave him up. So in this way Bhaktivinoda Thakur was successful. He was able to have this man put in prison. And then when this man was in prison, he actually drank poison and committed suicide. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was very powerful. He did not compromise in the teachings of the scriptures. He would not let people take unfair advantage and cheat the innocent people. Another example of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's power was when he was dealing with the king of Puri. Because as I said, he was in charge of the temple of Lord Jagannath. So it happened that the king of Puri one day he came there to the temple and he was making a lot of noise while they were having class. When the class was going on, they were talking the glories of Lord Jagannath and the king came in and disturbed the whole class. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur pointed out to the king, he said to the king, he said, you may be the king of one tiny kingdom on the planet, but Lord Jagannath is the Lord of the whole creation. You should be respectful to Him. You should not disturb. When we are speaking the glories of Lord Jagannath, you should not come and disturb everything. So the king was humbled and the king apologized and he bowed down. However, later on there was another problem that the king had taken 80,000 rupees from the account of Lord Jagannath and the king had taken that money for his own purposes. So Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was in charge of the accounts and he saw that the king had taken 80,000 rupees which, which is like a lot of money 150 years ago, 80,000 rupees, wow, that is a huge amount of money. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur told the king, you have to repay this by making offerings to Lord Jagannath. So the king was very angry that he had to repay that money because it meant the king was not going to have any more money. He's going to lose, lose all of his money. So the king arranged a yagya. He wanted to, to kill Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And he hired 50 brahmanas to do a yagya, which would kill Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And the brahmanas did the yagya for 30 days. For 30 days they were doing this yagya. And then at the end of 30 days, the king's son died. Not Bhaktivinoda, he didn't die. And nobody in Bhaktivinoda fa family died. But the king who, was doing, who wanted the yagya, his own son died. 
So he got just the reverse of what he wanted. This is the power of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Because he's a pure devotee, because he's surrendered to Lord Krishna, so Lord Krishna protects his devotee. Very important to see how the Lord protects his devotee. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur also had to take initiation. And he thought who to take initiation from. And finally, he took it from a person called Bipin Bihari Goswami. Now, you will notice on our altar, the disciplic succession is there, that on the, on the left side of Bhaktivinoda Thakur is Jagannathas Babaji. Not Bipin Bihari Goswami, but Jagannathas Babaji. Because Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was the one who chose which picture should go in the parampara. And he considered that Jagannath Das Babaji was giving a lot of instruction to Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Although he had taken initiation from Gorkishore, from uh, Bipin Bihari Goswami, he took the initiation from him. but. He did not get much opportunity to take instruction from him. And a lot of the instruction which he got came from Jagannath Das Babaji. Just like when, he, when Bhaktivinoda Thakur discovered the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he brought Jagannath Das Babaji there to confirm it. He didn't bring Bipin Bihari Goswami, maybe maybe Bipin Bihari Goswami had already departed, I don't know. But the person who came there was Jagannath Das Babaji. And it was Jagannath Das Babaji who was like the, the head of all the Babajis there in Nabadri. And he was the one who confirmed, yes, this is the birth site. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati put the pictures. Jagannath Das Babaji, then Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and then Gorky Shordas Babaji. So the point is that the disciplic succession is based on instruction. It's not based on initiation. The initiation is not as important as instruction. And with at one time, but while Bhaktivinoda Thakur was living, all the different acharyas would come there to his home in Swarup Ganj. You had Gorki Shordas Babaji, you had Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, you had Jagannath Das Babaji, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Now all four acharyas were all there at one time, and they would meet sometimes there in Swarup Ganj at the home of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And they would discuss Krishna Kata and the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But you can see there's a connection by instruction, not by initiation. So the instruction is more important. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur took initiation, his Diksha Guru was Bipin Bihari, but he took a lot of instruction from Jagannath Das Babaji. So Jagannath Das Babaji's picture is shown there on the altar. And it was Bhaktivinoda Thakur also who told his own son, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, that you have to get initiation. He told him, he said, I'm your seminal father. I cannot give you initiation. You have to get initiation from somebody else. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, Who? There's nobody. They're all rascals. They're all cheaters. There's no qualified person. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur pointed out, No, Gorki Shodas Babaji, he's a good person. He's good. He can give you initiation. So under the direction of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati approached 
Gorkishore does Babaji, and although Gorkishore does Babaji was reluctant, after some time he eventually agreed and he gave him the initiation. So today it's the disappearance day. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he left the body and his samadhi is there in Swarup Ganj, his home was there. But I think he left the body actually in Puri. He had a home also in Calcutta. Bhakti Bhavan was there in Calcutta, their home. They had a home also in Jagannath Puri where he was living. In his old age, he wanted to go for preaching. And he would tell his servant, get a horse and put me on the horse. Take me for preaching. Even though he was in old age and incapacitated, not able to move, he was requesting his servant, get a horse and put me on the horse, we will go for preaching. And his program in preaching was just like our own program in ISKCON. He would have kirtan and they would discuss some philosophy from the scripture and then distribute prasadam for everyone. So in this way Bhaktivinoda Thakur had many, many disciples, people every, in, in villages all over India. He was traveling there, going around preaching and giving the holy name. And when it came to building the temple at the Yoga Peak, he also collected the money. He had to raise the funds to build a temple in the Mayapur. In those days there was nothing. Because in the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, a hundred and fifty years ago, everyone was living in the villages. Calcutta was not a very big place, very small city, not many people there. And most people lived in the villages and did farming. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was going to these people and preaching. But at the same time, he also came to Calcutta and he would go to all the people and he would beg one rupee from everyone towards the construction of the temple there in Mayapur. So he built the initial center there at the Yoga Peep. Later on it's been developed. So today we are honoring his disappearance day. And today is also the disappearance day of Gadarhar Pandit. Gadarhar Pandit, who was a very, very dear associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He grew up with Lord Chaitanya. Their homes were near to each other. So they were children together. They grew up together and later on, when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, Gadarha followed him. Gadarha also went with him to Jagannath Puri. Gadarha could not tolerate separation from Lord Chaitanya. He was so attached to Lord Chaitanya. Gadarha is actually the expansion of Srimati Radharani, who represents the internal potency of Lord Krishna, right? In the Panchatattva, you have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Swayam Bhagavan. Then Lord Nityananda is the expansion. Advaita is the incarnation. And Gadarha is the internal potency. And Srivas is the marginal potency. So Gadarha is the internal potency is the expansion of Srimati Radharani. He comes in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes as Gadarhar Pandit. And Gadarhar Pandit, throughout his life, he was very devoted to Lord Chaitanya. He was very uh, renounced also. And it happened that one day when Pundarik Vijanidi came there, to Mayapur, Gadarhar had been told that there's a great sadhu coming. You should go and see him. You must go and meet this Pundarik. He's a very great soul. 
So Gadarhar went to meet Pundarik. But when he saw Pundarik, he was surprised because he was, he was a very wealthy person and he was well dressed with fine clothes and he was sitting on a table, uh, uh, beside the table, the table was full of numpkins and sweets and savouries and sherbet and coconut and different things to eat and drink. And Gadarhar, he was a brahmachari, very renounced. And he saw this Pundarik, someone was fanning Pundarik and Pundarik is chewing pan. And Gadarhar thought, he thought, this person's a materialist. How could he be a good devotee? He could not, he didn't think he could be a good devotee. But then Makunda, who was with Gadarhar, Makunda began to sing a verse from the scriptures describing the wonderful quality of Lord Krishna. And he was singing, Aho bhakiyam stanakala kutam jagam sayapayanada piyasavi labegatim datriyo chitantananyam Kambadailam Sharanam Rajema. Like this, he was singing this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is spoken by Uddhava. Uddhava is describing nobody knows how merciful is Lord Krishna, that he's so merciful that he accepts Putana, he accepts her to be his nurse, and he takes her to the spiritual world. Although she came with poison on her breast, that kalaka, uh, bakiyam stana kalakutam. She had put poison on her breast and she wanted to feed that poison to baby Krishna. So Krishna accepted her and he took her to Goloka to be one of his nurses there in Goloka. So Uddhava says, who could be more merciful than Lord Krishna? And so when, when, when Makunda sang that verse, then when Pundarik Vijanidi heard it, Pundarik Vijanidi's love for Krishna awakened. And he fell off his seat and he rolled on the ground and he cried and his whole body shook with tears, all his hair stood on end and the tears were coming from his eyes like rain and the floor was flooded with the water, the tears coming from his eyes and perspiration coming from his body and he was crying and crying and rolling on the ground and Gadarha was shocked and he thought, oh, oh, he thought, oh, what a great devotee because he has so much love for Lord Krishna. So Gadarha thought about what he, because Gadarha was thinking he's not a devotee, but now he understood, no, he's a very great devotee. So he, he went to Lord Chaitanya and he asked Lord Chaitanya, he said, you know, he said, I want to take initiation from Pundarik Vijanidi. So Lord Chaitanya said, very good, go ahead. So Pundarik Vijanidi gave initiation to Gadarhar Pandit. And in this way, Gadarhar Pandit uh, took mantra, Pundarik Vijanidi was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So Madhavendra Puri, you know, he was a great devotee. Pundarik Vijanidi was a, like a god brother of Ishwara Puri, who was the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. So in this way, Gadarhar became connected to Pundarik Vijanidi. And it said, this Pundarik Vijanidi in Krishna Leela, that he is, he is, uh, he is uh, not Kirtida, but uh, what's the name? The, the husband of Kirtida, Radharani's father, Vrishabhanu, Maharaj Vrishabhanu. So Maharaj Vrishabhanu comes in Chaitanya Leela as Pundarik Vijanidi. He became the spiritual master of Gadarha. And Gadarha, he went with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, Gadarha followed him. 
Gadarha never married like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted a wife, but Gadarha never accepted any wife. He was brahmachari. He followed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Puri. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would regularly come and he would sit with Gadarha and Gadarha would read Srimad Bhagavatam to him. And Lord Chaitanya particularly liked to hear the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj. And Gadarha would read Srimad Bhagavatam to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in this way they would associate together. Lord Chaitanya also gave a deity to Gadarha Pandit. And that deity is worshipped still today in Jagannath Puri, the Tota Gopinath deity. A very beautiful deity, Tota Gopinath. It's a very special deity because the deity is sitting down. So we never saw any other deity sitting down. But they say that initially the deity was standing. But Gadarha, he was serving the deity and he was getting old and it was difficult for him to stretch up to put the ornaments on the deity. So the deity understood that it was becoming difficult for Gadarha to serve him. So the deity sat down and in this way Gadarha could serve the deity easily. So that deity was given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the ashram of Gadarha Pandit is there today. You can go there and uh, you can take prasadam there often. We often get prasadam there from the… we ask the, the pujaris there, we pay them some money and we arrange to take lunch prasadam there from the, the temple of Tota Gopina. So Gadarha Pandit disappeared today also and tomorrow is the auspicious day of Gundicha Marjanam, the cleansing of the temple of Gundicha. Lord Jagannath has not been giving darshan for two weeks but tomorrow he will reappear and tomorrow is the first day of the Rathyatra. Oh, not tomorrow, the next day. T tomorrow is the Gundicha. Before Lord J Jagannath appears, we have to clean the temple. So Lord Jagannath is going to go to Gundicha. And nobody has been in the Gundicha temple for a year. So the temple has to be cleaned very carefully. And Lord Chaitanya used to go there every year with all of his associates. Previously, the, cleaning, the cleansing of the temple was done by workers. But Lord Chaitanya thought these workers, they won't do a very good job because they're just doing the job for salary. They're just making their living. Lord Chaitanya told all the devotees, we should go and do it all ourselves. So they arranged to get brooms and buckets, pots, to bring the water and brooms for sweeping and thousands of devotees all went with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they went there and they cleaned the Gundicha temple very thoroughly. So much so they cleaned, they cleansed it, then they cleansed it again, then they cleansed it again to make sure everything was very clean. In the same way, we're told Gundicha means the heart. And just as we clean the temple, we have to clean the heart very carefully, very thoroughly. We have to get rid of all the dirt in the heart. Just like in the temple, there will be grains and sand and dust, different things one after another they have to be removed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would personally take part in the cleaning of the temple. And he would take off his own cloth. He would take off his uttariya, this outer garment. He would take it off and he would sweep and wipe the floor with his own cloth just to get, make sure 
the temple was spotlessly clean. So the cleansing of the Gundicha temple is something which we all have to do. We have to clean our hearts and we clean our heart by chanting the Maha Mantra. And we want to chant without offense. We want to get rid of all of the anarthas, all of the material desires which are in the heart. The desires for profit, adoration and distinction. We want to get rid of the ahankar and the, the lust and the uh, tension. of others. We want to get rid of all of these kind of faults. And this is the Gundicha the temple. Getting rid first of all of all the gross contamination and then removing the subtle contamination. Subtle contamination just like after you cleanse the temple there may be some spots on the floor or on the wall or even on the ceiling, the spots didn't come off. Maybe it's a stain. And to get the stains off, you have to, you have to do something, maybe you have to get some uh, kerosene or something like that and rub it very hard. Scrape it to get the, that out. Um, so the same way, the subtle contamination within our heart, these different desires which are there in a subtle form, they all have to be removed. This is the cleansing of the Gundicha temple. So we want to clean the temple. We had a, we had a preliminary Gundicha marginum today at the Jagannathamaya. There were many people there at the program, so they were invited to help to clean the temple. And a number of people did. They helped to clean the temple in preparation for Rathi Atra, when Lord Jagannath will appear. We want Lord Krishna to sit in our heart. And if we want the Lord to sit in Don't ask the Lord to come and sit in a dirty place. Give us a nice, clean spot to sit. So that is why we have the Gundicha Marjana. And we must understand fully the significance of this Gundicha Marjana. Cleaning the temple is not material. It's a spiritual activity. So we want to clean the temple, we also want to clean our heart. And as we clean the temple, we will also clean the heart. It will naturally come out. The more we try to clean the temple, the more our heart will become purified by service to Krishna. So tomorrow is the actual day of the Gundicha Marjanam. And then Tuesday will be the Rathi Atra, when Lord Jagannath will appear and make his journey. So we will stop here tonight. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Are there any question? Anybody? Anybody has any question or comment? Yes? Nitai Priya has a question. Hare Krishna, Guru When Bhakti Vindu Thakur sent Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur to Mayapur, you mentioned that he was very aggressive in his preaching. Can you give an example of aggressive preaching that he did? Well, I said, you make enemies, you don't make friends. If, pe if, you, if people become your enemies, 
that's not very good, you know. We want to make friends. At the same time, we don't want to compromise on the religious principles, but we do want to be cautious. If you make enemies, then people will give you, they can do harm to you, they can give you a lot of trouble. And so, the Goswamis, for example, they were living in Vrindavan and they are described, Dira Dira Jana Priyo Priyakaro, that they were loved by the gentle and the ruffians. Everyone liked them because they were not envious of anyone. So if our preaching is too powerful, too strong, then people get threatened by it, you know. They become bitter and become enemies. And that makes, can make problems. Mm. So we have to be careful. He was Nasringa Guru. He was very, you know, like Lord Nasringa Dev, you know, quite very bold and very powerful. So some people, not everybody likes that style. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Sri Devi, any question? Yeah, Lochan Lochan Das Thakur wrote Chaitanya Mangal. Chaitanya Mangal. And the Chaitanya Bhagwat is written by Vrindavan Das Thakur. Actually, they changed the name. They, they changed the name. Uh, at one point, they changed. Uh, I can't remember how it was, but there was something that they changed the name and they over the. Decided that this should be the Chaitanya. All right, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, Hare Krishna. So, uh, we would like to thank you very for a wonderful uh, class on the Kiva Tatu and Vikara Rapandi. So, we will talk to today. We will talk to you today. So, uh, and uh, today is a small function. Before we go, uh, with a small function of rice. Baby, baby. Such a baby, a devotee baby. Yeah. Which place? Which place are the Mataji? Bangladesh. 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 First feeding of rice. Yeah. Oh. Have you got rice? Is there rice in here? It's a sweet rice. Oh, okay, that's usually what we give, sweet rice. Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna. Oh, very good. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Very good, he likes prasadam. Nishinga Mahadas give me Pavitra. Pavitra. Nishinga Mahadas. Want some more? He opened Six the first months. mouth, not yeah. taking any more now. Six months. Six months? Yeah. What's it? Pavitra. Just one more. Okay. Yeah. yeah, good boy. Yeah. 
Pavitra. Okay, Hare Krishna. So we'll go to the next one. We have uh, first uh, two characters. First Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Krishna. Thank 